Hi everybody, Josh Byerly here inside Mission Control. I'm joined by astronaut Chris Cassidy. Chris has been back for about six weeks or so now, yeah, got back in weeks. September. Mm -hmm, exactly. So Chris, first of all, welcome back. Talk Thank about you. how's the gravity treating you so far? You know, it, the readaptation has gone pretty well. In fact, uh, after my shuttle experience, I had kind of tingly feet two mm -hmm. weeks uh, pretty fast amount of time to be in space, but I didn't exercise much. So I was anticipating that and more coming back on station, and I got back here, and because of the T2 machine and the, and the ARED exercise bikes, uh, machines that we have up there, I felt fantastic. Didn't have any tingly feet, was able to walk, and it really felt great. It's, it's amazing how different it is, probably going up there about two weeks and then you know almost six months up on board the space station. Talk about the differences between those two. Yeah, so... Um, well, the one thing I didn't expect was sort of this own feeling of ownership, of like it was my home mm -hmm. on the space station. Whereas when when I went to the space station on the shuttle, I was a shuttle crew member. I ate and slept and went to the bathroom on the shuttle and went over to the space station to use the facilities and go do spacewalks and robotics and this sort of thing. But it wasn't my home. Yeah. And then to be there now for six months, it really, truly felt like home. If you're in your own house and you put a new audio-visual equipment in your living room, you take care where you route the cables because you don't want ugly cables in right. your family room. And that's the kind of feeling that we have in, you know, when you're there that long. You, you put a new computer somewhere, you, you make the cables perfect so you're not tripping over the wires and that sort of thing. It, really neat feeling. Let's talk about the crew that's about to go up. You've got Rick and Koichi and Mikhail get about about to head up here in just a few short days. November 6th, they're going to launch. You guys were the first crew to actually go up there in one day, right? Mm -hmm. Usually it takes about two days to get up to the space station. You yep. guys did it pretty pretty fast. Um, is it, was there a difference? I mean, did, did, did it feel weird going up there within six hours or what? Um, you, know, you know, I never did a, sh uh, a Soyuz mission before right. the, the previous way, so my what I knew is what happened. That's what it was. And right. uh, it was very comfortable. I, I enjoyed having my first night on space station be in a real bed, you know, so to speak, yeah. uh, the, a, a real toilet, a real selection of food. Yeah. Uh, it, that was that was a really nice feeling to have all that those creature comforts on that first night, a and uh, the Soyuz is a really small little vehicle, mm -hmm. and we were in it for six hours, but it went by so fast because there's a lot of activities that you have to do, preparing for different maneuvers and things as you lead up to the rendezvous. So it went by in a, in a, a split second. So talk about what they're doing right now down at Baikonur. They went down, I guess, a few days ago, and and that really is kind of it for them. They're they're about to go through the final preps for launch and head up to the rocket and then they're going to be on their way. So wh what's it like mentally to finally kind of get down to the launch site and get ready to go? So uh, there's a lot of pre-flight um, exams and hoopla that happens in Star City and you get that past you and you get on the plane and you go to Baikonur and, it, and it's a very calm feeling. Um, it's a slow pace. You're there for two weeks. Um, in the beginning, there's not much. Mm -hmm. It's wake up, a little bit of Groundhog Day every day. You wake up, you work out, you eat, you work out again if you want to read books and do some, some a few classes here and there, but it's pretty slow paced. And then you get to um, this event called the Second Fit Check where uh, it's about, I don't know, three or four days from launch. And, uh, and after that, the ball starts rolling really quickly. You have, uh, you can see you feel the excitement as launch is only a handful of days away. Your family and friends come into town and you see them mm -hmm. and the excitement really builds. And I think that's about the point where they are now. Um, leading up to that, uh, people are, are coming to visit them. And I remember that same feeling for me, really ratcheting up the excitement uh, and, and, and seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, like this is really going to happen. We're really, really going to go. And uh, yeah, it was, it's a neat feeling. So let's talk about the other crew, Karen and Luca and Fyodor. They're getting ready to come home. So what is it like at the end of all that to kind of realize, oh, my gosh, this is actually kind of coming to an end, and I'm about to wrap this up? Yeah, it's a strange feeling. Um, it's one, you, you think about going home because you want to see your friends and right. family, but yet it's a really cool place to be, and you never know if it's your last time you're ever going to have that opportunity to be up there. So there's a kind of mixed feelings, there's yeah. mixed emotions of, of how you want to proceed in those last few weeks. and But... In a nutshell, you're just doing your daily tasks and, and preparing things. Uh, like, for instance, I um, was making sure that Mike Hopkins was going to have everything that that I thought, oh, well, I had a belt. Does, does Hopkins have a belt? I'm going to leave him my belt. And there were stupid thing, little yeah. things like that that uh, kind of prepare you. And then I, I also remember, this sounds pretty trivial, but the excess clothing that I had, socks, underwear, T-shirts, that I knew I wouldn't need, once I got with, with inside... Uh, uh, 
a couple of the days, five days from, from going home. I knew I wouldn't need all that stuff. Yeah. So I threw it away. And that simple act sort of shifted my focus of, okay, I'm on space station to, all right, I'm really going home now. And, uh, and I got kind of excited to go home. I was sad to leave. You know, I really enjoyed my time with Karen and Luca and, and being on the space station, but it was, it was a neat time, uh, neat, exciting feeling to get uh, headed home. Yeah. Last question. What was kind of the biggest surprise that, that, that you didn't really anticipate, um, that you got up there and you're kind of like, wow, I didn't really expect this. Yeah, that I'm, I'm asked that often, and it's a tough question to answer because there's so diff so many different ways. Um, you know, I, I touched on that sense of pride of ownership mm -hmm. of the space station. That was one little uh, unexpected aspect of it. Um, but I'd seen the Earth before from from the space shuttle and the space station, but I never had seen the cupola. Yeah. And I think that was probably one of the most surprising things is just how magnificent the cupola views are, and you can just get lost up there for hours and sit there and look out the window and, and really take in the beauty of the planet as it goes by underneath us. So that's probably the biggest thing was just the mag magnificent beauty of the cupola. I appreciate it, Chris. Yeah. If you'd like to learn more about all of our programming that's ahead, as so we bring you live coverage of this launch and this landing, we're kind of doing it in backwards order. Typically, we have a landing and then a launch, uh, but this is going to be a busy few weeks for the crew on board the space station. But to find out when we're going to be covering it here on NASA TV, just log on to nasa.gov slash station. Thanks again, Chris. Yep. My pleasure.